Hey Packer fans, Coach Hahn here with you in the film room. Going to take a look today at special teams, more specifically the punt coverage unit that has been a real problem for Green Bay. And we're going to take a look at it in the Eagles game that was just played this last week. Um, we're going to take a look, starting off with the first punt of the game. The first drive Packers go three and out. They're punting from their own 20-yard line, 21-yard line, whatever that is. Okay, And the Eagles kind of set them up. To be honest with you, the Eagles out-schemed the Packers in that punt return touchdown. And here's how it works. So the Packers have five offensive linemen here protecting the punt, and then they're in what's called max protect, meaning they have two wings and a personal protector. So they have eight dudes in the box protecting the punt. Okay, The Eagles come out in a little bit different variation of their punt return game where they're going to double team both of the gunners and only keep six in the box right here. So advantage Packers as far as protection goes, definitely advantage Packers. However, the Eagles are trying to set them up for something in the future. So you can see here, this first punt just falls harmlessly out of bounds, okay? No big deal for the Packers, but you better believe the Eagles special teams coordinator is sitting up in the box and scheming up a way that he can use that numbers advantage now that he has in the return game. Because he's able to double team the Gunners and uh, the, the Packers won't spread out of their max protect format, he knows he can definitely drive the gunners down into the middle of the field and start to open up lanes for his returner. So nothing happens on this one. This goes out of bounds and it's fine Eagles ball, whatever. OK, but, you know, the Eagles special teams coordinator is setting this up for later in the game. You know, those notes went down. That communication happened likely at halftime or possibly even on the sidelines. So here we are in the fourth quarter where the Eagles are going to get this opportunity again. You can see the Packers are still in their eight-man protection, and the Packers tend to be in eight-man protection regardless of the front that the opposition is in anytime they're deeper than their own 30. So both times this ball came out, it was snapped at the 20-and-a-half-yard area. Okay, so the Eagles knew for a fact that they would get this look again, so they put their four up, and now you'll notice their backers, their two inside backers at that six-man box is even deeper. Their heels are at 10, maybe 12 yards. They baited Green Bay into this look, and what they're going to do is still double-team these gunners here. They're going to beg this field gunner here or the one in the widest part of the field to take an inside release, and they're just going to use this gunner to loop and crack him. And what that's going to do, and I'll show you a little bit later on as this play develops, there's the gunner with the inside release. Now he's going to spin down and crack right here. What that's going to do is open up this giant lane. It allows the Eagles to build a wall here and opens up all this space in the field for a special return man. Now, theoretically, this wing should loop out and start to hold some of that contain and attack the outside hip of that returner to push him back in here into the middle of the field where all the help is. But you'll just see the Eagles wall it off so nicely, he'll never even get an opportunity to do that. So here you can see the Eagles start to flip their hips and punt return all the way across the board here. They're flipping their hips and they're building this giant wall. OK, then they're just going to ask the return man to make one man miss. And this dude wears number 54. OK, and usually when you see somebody wearing number 54 and you not know you got a special return dude like Jalen Rager, you're going to allow this one on one to happen because nine times out of 10, your dude is just going to beat their dude. If that dude's wearing 54, he's wearing 54 for a reason. If he was a special athlete or something like that, he'd be wearing 18 or 33, but no, he's wearing 54. So they scheme that up and now you can see linebackers start to pivot their hips, start to get some crack action. And all of a sudden you've got your best return man one-on-one -on -one with a punter. And that's just not going to work out well for you if you are the Packers. So Packers definitely got out schemed. I know a lot of you have been saying, hey, we, we got to figure something out with the special teams coordinator. I'll leave all that conversation up to you. But this is now the second punt that's been returned for a touchdown. Um, and it's been kind of set up. Green Bay would go on to fix this later in the game where they pull those two wings up to tight end positions and allow them to fan out down the field more. But this should have been picked up immediately um, after that first punt. And it wasn't. And it cost... Green Bay a touchdown. Um, Green Bay's also had struggles in the punt protection game. I know Dexter Williams against Houston was a liability at right wing and ended up giving up a blocked punt. So they got some stuff to figure out as far as punt coverage teams go. Um, when you get into the playoffs, you best believe that this this will probably come back to hurt you. So again, my name is Coach Hahn in the film room taking a look at special teams. Thanks for taking the time to view this video on behalf of Packernet.com. Catch you all later.